Every business borrows money to fund operations or fuel growth. But do you know how to properly record the associated journal entries and understand their impact on the financial statements? Let's dive in and find out. Hi, and welcome to Concierge CPA. I am Juliette. And in today's video, we'll be covering one of the most common liabilities businesses incur to fund their operations, notes payables. I'll walk you through everything you need to know, including examples of how to account for notes payables in different scenarios. Specifically, we'll look at a short-term note payable with a single repayment of principal, as well as a long-term installment loan that requires periodic payments throughout the long term. So grab your notepads and let's get started. First, a little bit of background on why companies use debt. In accounting, borrowed money is referred to as debt capital. Why is that? Well, because it is an attractive alternative means of financing to issuing shares of stock. Lenders or creditors do not acquire voting rights in the company. Therefore, debt issuance costs no ownership dilution. Debt capital is acquired more easily than equity and the interest expense paid for the debt is tax deductible, unlike dividends paid. Debt financing supplies capital for expansion and for short-term operational needs. One such liability is the note payables. Notes payables are written promises made by a company to pay a specific amount of money to a creditor at a predetermined future date, often with interest. These promissory notes serve as formal contracts detailing the terms of repayment, including the principal amount, the interest rate, and the maturity date. They are classified as liabilities on a company's balance sheet and can be either short-term, do within one year or long term, do after one year. The accounting for notes payables depends on the terms of the note. We are going to go over two of the most common types. Interest bearing notes that require the principal to be paid at maturity with interest payments over the loan term and an installment loan where payments of interest and principal are required to be paid over the loan term. Interest bearing notes and installment loans are both types of notes payables, but they serve different business purposes and operate in distinct ways. Let's go over the interest bearing notes first. Interest bearing notes are often used when businesses need short-term funding, typically for what we call in accounting working capital. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. It is a measure of a company's ability to cover its short-term obligations with its short-term assets, which is essential for maintaining day-to-day -day operations. The borrowed funds from interest-bearing notes are used to maintain a healthy level of liquidity, ensuring the business can meet its operational needs. These types of notes payables are typically structured to require periodic interest payments, either monthly or quarterly, while the principal is paid in a lump sum at maturity. Let's look at this in an example. Example of an interest-bearing notes payable with monthly interest accrual and quarterly payments. Let's assume your company has taken out a 100,000 loan with an 8% annual interest rate for one year. For simplicity, let's assume it is January 1st and the principal of the loan is due on December 31st. Interest payments are made quarterly and the principal of the loan is paid at maturity at the end of the year. Although the interest payments are made quarterly, the company will accrue interest monthly in its books during the monthly close process. This is an example of an adjusting journal entry. So let's summarize the loan terms. The loan amount is $100,000, interest rate is 8% annual, the term is one year, the payment frequency, quarterly interest payments, and the principal repayment is at maturity at the end of the year. First, we're going to calculate the monthly interest amount that we will be posting at the end of each month to accrue for the interest expense in connection with the borrowed funds. The annual interest rate is 8% on a $100,000 loan. The total interest for the year is $8,000. Since the interest is accrued monthly, we're going to multiply the loan amount times the interest rate, $100,000 times 8% divided by 12. This gives us $666.67 per month. The company will make quarterly interest payments of $2,000 each, but it will accrue $666.67 of interest each month. The quarterly interest payment can be calculated as follows. $100,000 times 8% divided by four, which equals $2,000. 
So the company will make four quarterly payments of $2,000 each to cover the interest. The principal of $100,000 will be paid at the end of the year. So here are our journal entries. Let's break down the journal entries for each transaction related to the loan. On January 1st, when the loan funds are first received, the company will record the loan amount as a liability. Cash is debited to reflect the cash received from the loan. Notes payable is credited to record the obligation to repay the loan. The second journal entry we're going to make is the monthly interest expense. Each month, the company will accrue $666.67 of interest, even though the payment is not due until the end of the quarter. At the end of each month, the company will make the following journal entry. Interest expense is debited because the company is recognizing the expense for the interest incurred each month. Interest payable is credited because the company has a liability for the interest that has been accrued but not yet paid. This entry will be made at the end of each month until the end of the year for a total of $8,000 in accrued interest by the year's end. This amount will be paid down with the quarterly payments as we will see next. The third journal entry will be the quarterly interest payments. At the end of the first quarter, the company will pay $2,000 in interest, which reduces the interest payable liability. Interest payable is debited to reduce the liability that was accrued over the first three months. Cash is credited to reflect the payment made to the lender. The company makes another $2,000 interest payment at the end of the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter. The journal entry will be the same. The sum of the accrued interest payable is equal to the sum of the interest payments. Thus, at the end of the year, the interest payable account shows a zero balance. And our final journal entry comes at the end of the year. Now it is December 31st. The loan matures and the $100,000 principal is due and repaid. Notes payable is debited to remove the liability from the books once the loan is paid off. Cash is credited to reflect the cash payment made to settle the principal amount of the loan. So here's a summary of the journal entries. At loan received, we debit cash $100,000, credit notes payable $100,000. The monthly interest accrual, we debit interest expense for $666.67 and we credit interest payable for the same amount. To record the quarterly interest payments, we debit interest payable for $2,000 and credit cash for $2,000. When the loan matures, we make the principal repayment. We debit notes payable for the initial $100,000 borrowed and we credit cash for $100,000. And here's a picture of the accounts in T-Account format. The second common type of notes payable is an installment loan. Installment loans are commonly used by businesses to finance long-term investments or capital expenditures. These loans are structured to be paid back in monthly installments, which includes both principal and interest. Businesses often use installment loans for the following purposes. For expansion, financing the expansion of operations, such as opening new locations, entering new markets, or scaling existing operations. They use it for the purchase of equipment. Companies use installment loans to purchase machinery, vehicles, or other large assets needed for production or service delivery. These assets can be expensive, and an installment loan allows the business to spread the cost over time. They also use it for working capital. In some cases, installment loans can be used to manage cash flow needs or to fund seasonal operations, ensuring the business has adequate liquidity during peak periods. Let's go over an example. Let's assume a business takes out an installment loan of $100,000 at an 8% annual interest rate with a repayment period of 24 months, two years. So here are the loan terms. The loan amount, $100,000. Interest rate, 8% annual. The term, 24 months. The payment frequency, monthly payments. The, the loan type is an installment loan, meaning monthly payments will include both principal and interest. Using this information, we can calculate the monthly payment. The monthly payment remains constant from month to month. What changes, as we will soon go over, is the split between principal and interest. To calculate the monthly payment for the loan, we use the amortization formula. The monthly payment is calculated using this formula, where M equals the monthly payment, P the loan amount, R the monthly interest rate, therefore it's 8% divided by 12, N equals the number of payments, 24 months. Using this formula, the monthly payment is $4,522.73. For this video, we will use an amortization table that the lender provided to split this calculated payment between the interest portion and the principal portion of the payment. The creation of this amortization table is a topic for another video. 
Here is the full amortization table for the $100,000 loan with 8% annual interest over 24 months with monthly payments of $4,522.73. The table shows the payment, interest portion, principal portion, and the remaining balance after each payment. Notice the payment remains constant. The interest portion goes down for each payment and the principal portion goes up with each payment and the loan principal balance is reduced only by the principal payment until it reaches zero at the end of the two years. Here is how we will account for this loan and the payments. When the loan is first received, the company records the loan amount as a liability. Cash is debited to reflect the cash received from the loan. Notes payable is credited to record the liability of the loan. Next come the monthly payments. To record the monthly payment, we follow the amortization table provided by the lender. For the first monthly payment of $4,522.73, the interest portion is $666.67, and the principal portion is $3,856.06. The remaining balance after the first payment is $96,143.94. To record the payment, interest expense is debited for the interest portion of the monthly payment, again $666.67, Notes payable is debited for the principal portion of the payment, $3,856.06, reducing the outstanding loan balance. Cash is credited for the monthly payment of $4,522.73. For the second monthly payment, the interest portion is $640.96, and the principal portion is $3,881.77. The remaining balance after the second payment is $92,262.17. Those are the amounts we will use to record the monthly interest payment. The interest expense is debited for the interest portion of the second month's payment, $640.96. Notes payable is debited for the principal portion of the payment, $3,881.77, reducing the loan balance further. Cash is credited for the full monthly payment of $4,522.73. For each subsequent month, the same journal entries are made. As the balance decreases, the interest portion reduces and the principal portion increases. At the end of the loan term, after 24 months, the final payment is made, covering the remaining balance. In the final month, the interest portion is $29.95 and the principal portion is $4,492.78. The loan is fully paid off with a balance of zero. Interest expense is debited for the last month's interest portion, $29.95. Notes payable is debited for the remaining principal balance of $4,492.78, which clears the loan. Cash is credited for the final payment of $4,522.73. Let's wrap this up with a summary of the impact on the financial statements. When a company takes out a loan, it impacts the three key financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows. Let's break down how each of these statements is affected by the loan repayment process. First, on the balance sheet, the loan is recorded as a liability under notes payable. As the company makes its monthly payments, the notes payable balance decreases, reflecting the payment for the principal portion of the loan. Each month, the company also experiences a reduction in cash balance, which is the full amount of the monthly loan payment. For example, when the company makes a payment of $4,522.73, the cash account is reduced by that amount, and the notes payable decreases by the principal portion of the payment. Next, on the income statement, the company records the interest expense each month. This represents the cost of borrowing the money. Early on, the majority of the payment goes towards the interest, which reduces the company's net income. As the loan balance decreases over time, the interest expense gradually decreases, meaning that a larger portion of the monthly payment goes towards paying down the principal, rather than the interest. For instance, in the first month, the company might pay $666.67 in interest, but this amount will decrease as the principal is paid down. And finally, on the cash flow statements, the company records the cash outflows related to the loan payment. The interest portion of the payment is categorized under operating activities, as it represents an ongoing operational expense. On the other hand, the principal portion is reflected under financing activities, as it represents the repayment of the borrowed funds. For example, the total monthly payment of $4,522.73 will show as a cash outflow from operating activities for the interest portion and from financing activities for the principal portion. In summary, as the loan is repaid, the balance sheet shows a decrease in both 
the loan balance and the cash balance. The income statement shows interest expense that reduces net income and the cash flow statement captures the cash outflows for both interest and principal. This comprehensive process ensures that the loan's impact on the business financial position and performance is accurately reflected over time. And that's all on today's video. I hope this breakdown of how to account for note payables helped you understand the journal entries, the impact on financial statements and the loan repayment process. By properly recording these transactions, you ensure accurate financial reporting for your business. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more helpful accounting tips. Also, leave a comment below if you have any questions or if there is a specific topic you'd like me to cover next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Keep learning and growing your business.